Another aisle and another day enjoyed to the fullest on this new high road of the sky. Early the next morning, our great flying clipper ship lifted us once more into the sky. In 10 hours more, our silver wings spent us 1,508 miles from Wake to the picturesque tropical palm-covered Isle of Guam. Here again, Pan American brought you to a wholly different land, another land all but unknown until the coming of the flying clipper ships. The city of Agarnia was the commercial center of Guam, as well as the home of the naval governor of the island and the government schools, buildings, and hospitals. In the sun gold of a tropical sky, it lies in the path of the trade winds in the mid-Pacific. Agania, a typical tropical town, although modernized, retained an atmosphere which recalled that at one time it belonged to Spain, especially the old cathedral built by the early missionaries. The gracious hospitality of this beautiful little island was reflected in the pretty native girls with their colorful costumes of brilliant silks, satins, and flowery brocades. Their dress-up costumes were patterned after gowns worn by Spanish ladies when the island was under Spain's control. Guam's fine highway led past many spots of interest in this beautiful coconut-covered island. Elig Bay, where the ultramarine water and white surf spread patterns over sands of coral and lava. In those spots where there was no highway, the Carabao carts passed along the smooth shores of the lovely palm-fringed beaches. Like most children the world over, the boys of Guam were happy youngsters and had few cares. Ancient carts trundled along the beautifully shaded roads drawn by lazy water buffalo. Their cargoes, tropic foods, masses of lovely blossoms, or like this one, a family on its way to town for a shopping tour. All streets and houses in Guam were very clean, picturesque little dwellings. Roofing a house in Guam was a community affair. All the men of the neighborhood turned out in full force, and in a very short time, the tedious work of lifting and tying each leaf onto the framework of the roof was accomplished. This was always followed by a happy celebration, and the pretty girls danced the native fandango. In this way, what might have been a tedious work became merely the prelude to a happy holiday.